The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien, coming to you live from TFNN. Just after 9 a.m. Eastern Time, I come to you with the S&Ps in record price territory. We're right near 6,000. You get the futures right now. Up another 17 points overnight. That's three-tenths percent in the positive. We're trading at 59.75. We came into yesterday, excuse me, Tuesday at 57.50, quite a day across the board in the markets. NASDAQ 100, we're higher yet again, up by about half a percent. We hit 21,000 in the futures. Yeah, and you back things up, right? The previous highs that we had in the NASDAQ 100 in July, 20,983. You talk about a bullish engulfing, right? Gets everything we had since about September 23rd. These are weeklies, and you're encompassing all-time highs on the NASDAQ 100. Dow, how about 40,000? We hit it this morning, folks. We're just under that price level. But Dow, all these candles, right? And they did it with volume. Not surprising. But we'll see where we come in on a weekly basis, okay? But on a daily basis, yeah, you did it with volume. There's your spikes. Now, what's interesting is, you know, with some of the lows, you do have some volume sticking out here. But nonetheless, it's a big day across the board. Yesterday, we have the Dow trading up 1,500 points yesterday. Slight red candle, but nonetheless, we hit 44,000 for the first time. And how about the Russell, man? The biggest move of all yesterday. The Russell, we're down by a tenth of a percent this morning at 2403. And how about the Russell? All-time highs at 2460. We hit 20. 424 this morning so only about a percentage and a half away from there and yeah you look at where the russell was about a year ago how about up 50 percent from where we were just a year ago in the russell you jump over to the s p's for some context about a year ago we're trading at 4100 s p's are almost up 50 percent as well remarkable run from those october lows of last year not even cherry picking the pullback lows of 3500 from a couple years ago now no time to rest. It is Fed Day, folks. Just like that, we fast forward to the next event on the horizon. You have yields giving back some of the gains in terms of what we had. So you got the 10-year. Okay, you're a solid 20 points off of where we were on the lows. This is the most interesting fact of what's going on right now because where are yields going to rest on a longer-term basis? Now, we were at about 4.42. That was at about 7.30, 8 o'clock this morning. We're currently sitting at about 4.39, right? So continuing. Now, that's a weekly. You can see where we are, but pretty remarkable, right? The move that we just had in yields, think about this. The move we just had in yields, you still have a red candle, right? And that's because of the pop that we got. If you back things up from Friday's action, to where we were on Monday, right? You closed out Friday at 109.28, and that's exactly where we are right now. So yes, it was a mammoth move in yields yesterday. Couldn't help but talk about how weak everything looked, whether it was the 10-year, the 30-year, right, across the board. But it is remarkable when you look at where we were on Friday. Now, Friday, remember, what was Friday? Friday was jobs for October. Friday was 12,000 jobs added for October. Friday was the market thinking, hold on a second, there is the impetus here that we really could see a higher yield coming at you. Nonetheless, we're right back to where we were on Friday. So there's been no mammoth move yet. This has just been a continuation of what's going on. Boy, it was a big one. We'll see where we go. But look at it. We're still dealing with red candles on a weekly basis. And that's when we had yields spiking to dramatic fashion. Now, that could change today at 2 p.m. and 2.30 Eastern time when we have Chairman Powell. But you take things in stride. We have yields pulling back a bit. You jump over to the dollar index. The dollar, a little bit higher price. Yeah. There's your daily, but let's put it on a 15 minutes. Excuse me, pullback. Um, yes, so we have lower yield. That's it. We have lower yield this morning, right? 4.38, and that is giving some dollar weakness, okay? 104.55, and again, it is interesting in terms of, you know, you back it up to Friday, 
we're almost right back to where we were. So Mammoth moves, but in the context, we're just back to where we were on Friday. 104. 54 right now in the dollar and yeah it was quite a move in gold yesterday but just like that gold's 40 dollars off the highs of last night gold is right now about 30 dollars off the highs of yesterday morning we're trading at 26.91 in gold and yeah all things considered we're sitting right at this 2700 price point that's where we were on september 26th that's where we were october 17th it is november 7th and that's where we are right now at about 26.90 so How's this market going to digest the Fed? We'll see what they have to say. All indications are that they will cut interest rates by a quarter basis point. Now, when you think about, okay, I, I can't imagine that Chairman Powell is going to say anything decisive today when even his job is hanging in the balance, more so than usual, the day after the election results become clear. Now, you get into the market expectations. We've been talking about it almost 100% chance that they're cutting by a quarter basis point. Don't expect a surprise. They're not in the business of surprises with the Fed. The expectations are they're going to cut by 25 basis points. That's going to bring the target range to 4.5 to 4.75%. Now, here's what to look at, right? Let's just use the lower range, the lower boundary of that range, 4.5%. So as of today, assuming the Fed goes a quarter basis point cut, which is what the market is almost certain of, the target range is going to be 4.5% on the lower boundary, okay? Now, they can do that because there's a very real argument to be made that even at 4.5%, they are still restrictive, right? Very hard to make the case that they're accommodative at 4.5% because you're, you're very real chance that you are above the natural rate of growth, right? The R star. But where do we go in the future? Because if yields continue the move they had yesterday and they've recoiled a bit boy it's going to get interesting over the next three or six months folks let's just jump forward now you understand that this is baked in so this meeting we're going to be at 4.5 for the lower boundary you go to december where's the market thinking well they're only being thinking about a 70 percent chance that we get another cut in december you go to january okay and there's an 18% chance that they might even not even cut again for the next two meetings. Now, remember, it's factored in. We're getting a quarter cut, okay? They're not going to change that for today at 2 o'clock. What is he going to say? That, that could change things. But it does get interesting when you look at there's only a 50% chance that we get one cut over the next two meetings following this one. And then you really want to get interesting. You go out to June. And, folks, June is a very far way into the future. But you have – a a decent probability here, a 40% chance priced in this market, market, but that by June, which is over the next five meetings after this one, right? Because take this one out of the equation. This one's figured out. By June, okay, there's a 40% chance that they only have one or two cuts over the next five meetings. How is the market going to react if we are at a point where the Fed is at 4.5% and – they can't cut because they're worried about inflation. That's a dramatic risk in this market. Call it a tail risk if you want, okay? But that is a risk that you better be pricing somewhere in your probabilities of trading. Now, can the market handle a higher yield to that degree? It looks like it can today. It looks like it can for right now, but we'll find out. we got a lot to talk about, folks. Stay tuned. We'll talk some equities when we get back. Don't go away. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento, a pro's pro with over 50 years of experience. Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, 
charts and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the Newsletters tab. Building wealth trading in the stock market seems impossible to most people. They think it's too volatile and risky. Most people aren't going to take the time to educate themselves on how to do it right. But you're not most people, are you? At TFNN, you'll get the guidance you need to refine your strategies and techniques to invest like a pro. Because you'll be a pro. All TFNN subscriptions, books, software, and courses are available at TFNN.com. And I'm even going to tell you how to get them for less. Use TFNN's Tiger Dollars and you'll get up to a 20% bonus on your purchase. And once you apply them to your account, Tiger Dollars are automatically used for all future or recurring charges. Tiger Dollars also never expire, are fully transferable, and are a great way to add savings to your newsletters or services. Become the investor you were born to be at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. This portion of the Morning Market Kickoff is brought to you by Direction's Daily Leveraged and Inverse ETFs. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the direction. Visit Direction.com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider funds' investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. All right, welcome back, folks. We got the S&Ps inching towards 6,000. We got the NASDAQ 100 at 21,000. We got the Dow right under 44,000. Our man Basil Chapman loves those round numbers. He's coming up next, folks, with the Tiger Technicians Hour. And Basil has just announced he's going to be talking about it on his show, folks. He's got a live webinar coming up one week from today. He's primed and ready for the next phase of this market, sectors and stocks for the next phase, the next market phase. You can sign up for the opening call right now. You gain access to Basil's outstanding newsletter, folks. He puts out updates every morning. He puts out videos out throughout the weekend. You gain access to a plethora of archive webinars when you sign up, and then you gain access to this webinar coming up one week from today. It's a 90-minute webinar. Basil's got too much for 60 minutes, man. 90 minutes from 4 till 5.30 on the 14th. Check that out. You can sign up with a 30-day money-back guarantee. And don't wait, folks. Get in there right now if you're going to sign up. You get a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers, and you get the newsletter, and you're in there, and you get the event going on one week from tonight. And that will be archived if you cannot attend live. And check that out on the front page of TFNN right now. Talking about former out-of-favor big losers becoming winners, all right? Looking at the weekly time frames to gauge intermediate term trends all right he's talking about the 914 moving average crossover i love learning that one from basil he talks about that all the time if you're unfamiliar with it that alone is worth signing up folks looking at that moving average crossover that he loves to use sector rotation should continue as new groups rally you talk about rotation man check that out with basil i'm looking forward to that one and don't forget about tomorrow morning folks larry pesavento live trading with larry you can sign up for larry you can save fifty dollars off your first month just enter code larry nov24 normally it's 295 that gets you in there for 245 and you get two live trading sessions folks each of them three hours all right that's a deal man you know 245 Two different three-hour live trading sessions with Larry, one going on tomorrow, and then one on November 22nd. 
uh, two weeks after that to follow. So that one's tomorrow morning. Check them both out, folks. You cannot go wrong. Okay, getting back to this market. So as I mentioned, yields in focus. It's Fed Day. I mean, it's it's hard to get excited after we had such the movement of a presidential election. But any other day, this would be the ultimate data point, right? The Fed is here. Well, we'll see where they go because there is a lot of uncertainty when it comes to the Fed and forecasts. And the market seems to think that they're going to go extra slow. That's what I was just talking about, right? When we we're looking at the CME FedWatch tool, markets under the impression that they're going to go extra slow because there are inflationary forces in play here. Now, where does rhetoric meet reality? Nobody really knows yet, all right? Trump has many grandiose statements on the campaign trail. That got him elected. We'll see which ones actually become policy. Now, Republicans looking to sweep both chambers and the presidency. They'll have full control, okay? And we'll see where we go. But when you talk about the Fed, man, now, you get into some of these numbers, okay? You're talking about maybe, yeah, different analysts, different takes, okay? Inflation could be 75 basis points higher in 2025 under a Trump presidency, right? That's going to give the Fed some pause, okay? Whether it's going to happen or not, you better believe that it's going to give them some pause, and it should give them some pause. If these tariffs rip through the economy, yes, it could be good in the long run. I, I, As I've said, I love that conversation, okay? This is not political. But what's so interesting is seeing how the economy was a huge factor, rightfully so, when it comes to an election, okay? And there's a consensus out there that Trump is going to fix that and he's going to write the ship, and he's going to bring prices back down. I don't see how that plays out, folks, okay? And when it comes to the tariffs, that is an inflationary force. And when it comes to the Fed, they have to be aware of something like that. Now, in this article, they're talking about the same thing I was mentioning, folks, okay? Quarter point's baked in, right? Quarter point is baked in for tomorrow. That's not going to change. Where they go in December... We probably won't know yet as well because Trump's not even in office yet. But where we go down the future for next year, yeah, you're talking about – where was it? I think it was this Nakamura when they were talking about – let me get the one exactly. Because, yeah, they're talking about maybe one cut next year instead of four. Where were we? we got a lot to talk about. Get a little lost here. Yes, this is Nomura Holdings, Okay. They're looking for higher inflation, and they now expect just one cut from the Fed next year from four projected before the election, okay? We expect Trump to follow through on his campaign. Tariffs, they're probably coming, folks. That's an easy one. Doesn't take Congress. It's probably coming. Leading to a significant near-term boost in inflation and modestly lower growth. Again, you can make the case that's the best thing for the country longer term, but shorter term, very difficult to make the case. No matter how many times Trump's going to tell you that China's going to pay those tariffs, that's not the case, folks, okay? China doesn't pay them. They're simply a tax on American companies that import goods from China that then they translate onto consumers or they eat the cost themselves, right? Eating into margins, eating into profits, etc. That's probably going to happen. To put it lightly, and you have a Fed figuring out how to meander that. Now, you want to go down the line of, of how many levels deep do you go, okay? And this is always an interesting one. So let's say that's the case. Let's say inflation rages. It doesn't even have to rage. Let's say there's inflationary forces, a better way to put things, okay? Trump's not going to want that. He's also not going to want higher interest rates, okay? You know he's going to be out there with the bully pulpit, at a minimum, if not just outright firing Powell, okay? But how do you do that? Because the reason why we want a nonpartisan Fed, right, the reason why we don't want the president controlling that is because, let's just say, we all know Trump's a businessman. He has not cut ties with his personal businesses. He is in real estate. Real estate is about debt and about leverage. The last thing Trump wants for his personal wealth, which you make your decisions, I'm pretty sure that factors into decisions that he's making in some capacity. The last thing he wants is interest rates remaining elevated for an extended period of time. So let's say he somehow uses his influence to bring rates down. Those two don't go together, okay? If you have tariffs causing inflation at the same time, 
You have the president forcing it'll just fuel more inflation. So I don't think that can happen either. I don't know where it goes, but that is going to give the Fed pause, right? I'd love some takes. Where do you think that's going to go? Try and suck the politics out of things, right? If you believe in tariffs, good for you, man. And you're right. They may be there. Okay, I love that conversation of tariffs. I talk about Tommy's three years old, man. I run the scenario of what's the best thing for Tommy when he's 20 years old, 30 years old, 40 years old. And that translates to what's the best thing for the country in the long run, okay? Tariffs might be the best thing for the long run, but that might – come with inflationary forces right now, which would mean that we need higher yields to make sure that those forces don't even accelerate further, right? Is that what's going to happen? I don't know. That's, that's, that's what Trump ran against. I don't know where that goes, but that is going to give the Fed pause, man. There's no reason with markets at all-time highs across the board, with yields going up right now, that they need to cut dramatically. But we find out at 2 o'clock today. We're coming back for the opening bell, folks. We'll talk some individual equities. Don't go away. The consistency you're looking for is closer than you think. One or two adjustments are usually all you need to change your equity curve from red to green and keep it there. Come join Larry Pesavento live to learn what separates the winners from the losers. Join Larry Pesavento on the second and fourth Friday of every month for three hours of live trading from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. Eastern Time, where Larry will show you the market setting up and most important of all, the state of mind of a winning trader. By watching Larry trade, you'll learn the Fibonacci levels. You'll learn how to apply A to B to C to D trading patterns. You'll learn trade management, pattern recognition, and much more. Join Larry October 11th and 25th for more live trading action. Your purchase goes towards two sessions, so make sure to sign up now so you don't miss a chance to sit next to Larry as he trades the market live. For all information and to reserve your spot today, go to the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. If you spend any time online researching trading techniques on how to begin your trading journey, you've no doubt come across many folks who push Forex trading as a way to make big money quickly. Unfortunately, there are equally as many stories of these so-called Forex professionals just looking to make a quick buck off aspiring traders without actually teaching the ins and outs of the Forex market. This is what sets Teddy Keckstack's The Tiger Forex Report off the riffraff. Every Monday, former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member and author Teddy Keckstad releases his Tiger Forex Report newsletter, where he dives into the complex world of Forex and takes time to actually teach you his methods that have made him so successful in the fast-paced and rewarding world of Forex trading. Furthermore, all subscribers receive access to archived live streams of Teddy's, where he provides university-level education to help you in Forex trading. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Forex awaits. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We got equities open. You got the S&Ps up by 21 points, record territory. Never never seen it before. To the tick, folks. We open at 59, 79, 75. Highest we've ever seen S&P futures on record. NASDAQ 100, we blow apart 21,000. Record territory, 2124. The Dow just below that 44,000 price mark. And the Russell taking a little bit of a breather after quite the acceleration yesterday in the Russell. Remarkable. S&P, NASDAQ comp. Dow 
and Russell just under that price level, but all of them right near all-time highs. Now, before we jump to some equities just talking about, I mean, square the two of these. Now, remember, one of the things <clears throat> that Democrats took heat for, <clears throat> right, was that while inflation was raging, they had stimulus still going on in the economy, okay? And one of the critiques of the administration was that inflation was raging and there was still stimulus being provided that was fueling that inflation. Well, folks, what is tax cuts and tariffs going to do? Tax cuts are great, but that is more money in people's pockets, which could potentially fuel inflation, right? You have a period of time that that could be one. And then, of course, you have tariffs on the other side. And this is Mnuchin, okay? He's talking about it. Now, you have Iran sanctions in there. That's a whole other animal, okay, in terms of geopolitical risks, how that's going to play out. But just keep it in mind, man. Just use, you know, the, the thought process of where inflation is going to be for those because it's an interesting one. And when you talk about, you know, that's a great chart, Peter, I, you know, talking about, and it's true. People are caught up in the inflation that took place from 2000. 21 to 2023 okay they don't care that we're back to two and a half percent absolutely agree what's a little interesting for lack of a better term and interesting is a tough one man that one i it's talk about uh, many uses okay but when you look at the wage growth okay we still have dramatic wage growth in this economy this is the difference between the inflation rate and the growth of wages in the u.s from 2020 to 2024 and boy I hope we don't see it again. We had inflation of over 9% in the middle of 2022 when inflation was raging, okay? But look at the wages that you have in blue. Folks, we had wages at 7%, and then we had them at 5%, and we had them at 4% coming into that. You got to compound them all, okay? Now, when you just look at some numbers, all right, you're talking about wages from – because. You know, 2018, 2019, you combine them, about 4.6%, some of the numbers I'm finding out there, okay? So you have 4.6% prior to 2021 or so, all right? You can see, that's where you add those two. Wages were at about 3.5%. Inflation's at one. That's real wage growth, okay? 2022, yeah, you had wages going up almost 7%. 2023, you were at 5%. And 2024, we've still seen them increase to a decent amount, 4%, something like that. Folks, you add all those up, okay? People are making 20 to 25% more money on their wages from where they were in 2019 and 2020. Now, that doesn't make them feel any better when they go to the grocery store and all that money that they thought they were making is useless because it just keeps them at the same standard of living, all right? But I don't know how that reverses. And that's where things are going to get complex, that if we have tariffs and we have tax cuts and we have corporate tax cuts, right, those are inflationary forces. And we see the reaction in yields. Keep your eye on yields. But remember that one because, you know, the human mind can play tricks sometimes. And, you know, it's what have you done for me lately type stuff, right? Humans always want more, folks. I mean, you know, no matter where you are in the status quo of life, you always want more. Complacency is not something that we're akin to. And so no matter what, you're always going to feel like at this time when we're all so used to certain prices. But keep your eye on those wages, too, because this is not going to reverse. All right. I don't know how this is going to play out. Many workers, many voters feel that that's the case, and we'll see. But disinflation is not something that we want necessarily. OK, because of what it comes with. Of course, I want all the prices to go down. I'd love to go to Publix and not spend a whole paycheck. Right. But that only happens in dire economic circumstances, usually. Right. And. You don't want that to happen generally. And so if that's not going to happen and you're going to have tariffs and you're going to have tax cuts, allowing more profits and you still have wage growth, four to five percent. The Fed is going to be very, very patient, as they probably should at this time. Okay, There is radical uncertainty because nobody knows where rhetoric is going to meet reality right now. So I'm trying to give you the warnings here to not get too far ahead on the Fed because it would probably be prudent for them at this time to not move – so quickly there's no reason to move so quickly okay they already cut by 50 they're going to cut by 25 today probably and then they're probably going to try and see if they can pause a bit 
without freaking out the market and see where actually some of that reality is going to meet the rhetoric of the campaign trail. And we'll find out. All right. Let's talk some individual equities and let's talk ride sharing. How about Lyft? They're catching a lift today by 28%, folks. You talk about it. They expect current bookings in the current quarter of 4.28 to 4.35. They basically just blow it out. Strong earnings across the board for Lyft. And yeah, look at that move on the after hours. And then look at the move this morning up by almost 30% right now. Staggering. You jump over to Uber shares. They actually give it back. So this is a story of one company, not an industry. Let me make sure I'm not muted here. Nope. Okay. Um, yeah, nonetheless, you talk about a trade higher for Lyft. You jump over to Arm. Their numbers, they give it up and they get it all back. They're basically flat right now on their numbers. And, yeah, they – a um, little bit of a mixed reaction, as you can tell in the overnight. Yeah, they actually – Surpassed the estimates, okay? They had adjusted earnings at 30 cents on 844 million. The market was only looking for 26 cents on 808. Nonetheless, the forecast wasn't there, but they like it. Yeah, to put it lightly, right? All right, we talk about video games. Take two interactive, up by about 4.4% on their numbers. And yeah, how about revenue, man? You talk about numbers. $1.47 billion in the quarter. Not a bad 90-day take for a video game maker, man. Let's check in on Roblox, too. Because as I've mentioned before, Roblox, man, the way they put a... I mean, it's just amazing. Of all the choices that Tommy has, and I talked about it yesterday. I was with some business associates, and we were talking. I was saying there's good screen time and bad screen time. Roblox falls in the middle. It's just... Uh, it's not bad. It's not great, okay? He gets some Roblox time because he loves it, but of all the apps, of everything he could choose... He has a Switch as well, a Nintendo Switch. We got Mario Kart. We have uh, some Marvel games on there. He loves Roblox more than anything. And, yeah, you know, something like 40% of their players are under the age of 13. It's geared towards young kids. Somewhat remedial games, but geared towards it. And, yeah, you talk about a company that in the longer run, it is pretty interesting, to put it lightly. All right, let's talk a little bit of dating sites. How about it? We talk about Bumble. B M B L. Look at that slide, man. Whew. Look at that thing. Let's go back even further. Look at this. Do you do you have to be a technician, folks, to see where the trend is? Bumble's down another 3.5 percent on their numbers, and you got Match down 16 percent. People ain't spending money on on dating sites right now, and we'll talk a little bit about that. We'll be right back, folks. Stay tuned. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk, so why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? One simple answer, the opening call newsletter. Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school, taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. 
Opening Call subscribers also receive access to dozens of educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. For traders who crave risk, Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs provide opportunities to magnify short-term perspectives with up to three times a daily leverage, utilize bull and bear funds from both sides of the trade, and trade through rapidly changing markets. These are highly leveraged ETFs with daily resetting designed for short-term trading, not long-term investing. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the Direction. For up-to-date pricing and performance, go to Direction. Dot com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. So, yeah, Match Group, you're down by 17% on their numbers. Uh, fourth quarter revenue outlook. Missed the number, 865 million to 875. The market was looking for 905. So that's quite a miss. And match down to $32 from about 38 yesterday. You take a look at the longer term time frame. Probably on your way to 30, if not lower, right? Where are we going to stop? We're really going to stop at 32 when we have a nice double bottom out there from June and July. We back it up even further. And boy, all these sites, man. How's that for a nice symmetrical formation? Our man Basil Chapman, right? Check out Basil's webinar, folks, a week from today. Don't forget about our man Larry coming up tomorrow as well. But I always think of Basil. These nice symmetrical cup formations. And boy, that's, that's, uh, that's a head and shoulder, man, right there right match and then bumble quite a different story they got no head just straight to the shoulders to negative territory 772 down 1.1 percent for them as well now talking about the russell okay this one's interesting because the russell man you know and we're talking about in the den usa and i hear it let's see what happens right iwm usa baseball boy the market agreed yesterday but one thing to keep in mind that i found myself thinking about last night okay that's why yields are so interesting folks okay you got to keep your eye on yields no matter what now we are recoiling a bit as i mentioned we're only back to where we were about last friday so no huge move just yet the market adjusting to what we saw yesterday and now it's about half the move that we had in the tenure Okay, you take a look at the 30-year, the ZB, and pretty similar action. Right back to where we were on Friday. We've taken back about half of the move. Yesterday at this time, we were a full point lower at 115.10. We're at 116.18. So the writing's not on the wall yet. We're 24 hours into this, folks, okay? And it's going to take months for the market to get a little bit of clarity about where the actual policy decisions are going to lie. Okay, now, with that in mind, what to keep in mind is, with that in mind, what to keep in mind, but yes, the Russell's negative by three-tenths percent today, and you want to keep your eye on the yields because smaller companies are more likely to be tied to a floating interest rate, okay? And just Google this yourself, folks. You'll find it, okay? And the number out there, somewhere between 30, 40, 50 percent, okay? Floating rate debt as a share of outstanding debt for the Russell 2000 is 51%. Floating debt, did you get that? Is about 50% in the Russell 2000. For the S&P 500, almost half of that, maybe 25%. Now, those numbers vary depending on where you're getting your information, okay? You have one company I put up there that says about 30% of the small cap debt was variable in 2023, whereas large caps was at about 8%. The one thing to take away is small caps have much greater variable rate debt than large caps. And if we do get an explosion in yields, keep that one on your radar because... 
you can only sustain it to a certain level. And if they have a bunch of floating debt, yes, it's, you know, deregulation, right? Mergers, all that stuff coming down the line. But keep your eye on yields because the Russell, man, is approaching all-time highs we made in 2021, okay, of 2460. We're right up against that level right now. But yields are going to matter more so to the Russell than anybody. When you look at the floating rate debt of the big guys versus the small guys, the Russell is just loaded with floating rate debt. And, yeah, you can better believe that that's going to impact those companies if yields end up going higher. And like I said, it's going to take months, folks. We're not going to get any clarity from the Fed today. Chairman Powell is probably going to be as tight-lipped as he can be because he doesn't know the answers, man. Just like all of us, he doesn't know the answers. He can make educated guesses. Right. But he doesn't know the answers of where those what's going to be the tariffs, what's going to be the tax cuts. How is that going to impact wages? How is that going to impact consumer prices? Right. There is a lot lying out there where it would be foolish of him to put out any type of estimation over a longer period of time when there is so much uncertainty. It's going to give them pause and rightfully so. All right. Jumping around to other equities. How about Qualcomm today? Up by two percent. We put it back to a daily. You're up to 230. We've got a bid with the market yesterday. We opened higher and we gave back some of it on their numbers, though. Yeah, some of it to, to a dramatic degree. You were all the way up to 193. I saw it this morning early at about 185. We're trading at 176. And yeah, they come in with decent numbers. They have an additional $15 billion share repurchase. The market likes that. They beat on the top and bottom line. They bring 269 for earnings per share. The market was looking for 256 revenue of 10.24 billion. The market was looking for 9.9, .9, .9, and uh, they guide up on the revenue for the current quarter. 10.5 to 11.3 is what, what they're looking for, and the market was looking for about 10.59. Yeah, so big numbers for Qualcomm out there. In handsets, we delivered greater than 20% year-over-year growth in Android revenues. Yeah, big numbers, man. Qualcomm, they give it back though. Yeah, 176. I mean, for those types of numbers, maybe just digesting the gain that we had yesterday as well. You came into yesterday at 165, and you got a Trump win, and you got some blowout earnings, and you're trading at 176 right now. We jump around to some of the Fang Magnificent Seven. Apple with a bid up by 1.2 percent. Check out this Nasdaq 100, man. Check it out. You're not stocking, stopping those big caps. So we got Apple in the positive. Microsoft up by about four tenths percent right now. We just did Apple. You jump over to Amazon. How about 210? 1.3% in the positive for Amazon. We jump over to MetaShares. 2% to the positive, man. This this market is relentless. Google shares this morning up by 7 tenths percent. We jump over to Tesla. Tesla holding steady at about 290. And boy, you talk about a pop, man. And it is interesting, right? DJT down 16%. Folks, Buy the rumor, sell the news. Buy the rumor, sell the news. Do not forget about that one, man. Absolutely remarkable that if you buy DJT anytime on Tuesday, you're in a losing position. Well, why? Folks, this is a video game meme stock for right now. Yeah, it might not be in the future, but you better believe it is right now. Look at this chart over the last year. Okay, this isn't politics. This is trading. Look how many people are in losing positions on this equity after Trump had a landslide victory. Right. Be careful out there. There's many other trades that you can profit from besides DJT. You want a trader for volatility? God bless you. Um, but keep those stops tight across the board, to put it lightly. Yeah. All right. We check back in on the gold contract this morning. Gold catching a little bit of a bid up near 2700 right now. Yeah. 2698. We were at 2650 at about 10 o'clock last night. And yeah, maybe we're getting maybe the first move wasn't the move because look at these yields, man. The 10 year. 109.31 right now. We were at 109.07 just yesterday. Yeah, there's going to be some volatility, man, coming down the line. And look at that. The ZB, the 30-year, up by almost a full point and a half. It's 116.22. And as I mentioned, we're just back to where we were Friday afternoon. So do not think the writing is on the wall yet on those yields, but keep your eye on them, man, because they are going to decide so much. And look at that dollar pulling back. As we got yields pulling back as well, the dollar right where we were on Friday. It's just Friday afternoon in the markets, folks. That's it. All the volatility. Yeah, it's not Friday afternoon in some equities. That's for sure. But it is Friday afternoon in yields. It's Friday afternoon in the dollar right now. Gold, not quite. A little bit lower on gold. But even gold, where we were on Friday, 
Yeah, about twenty-seven forty. Only forty bucks off that price level. Markets in the green across the board. Record territory. We got one more segment. Don't go away, folks. Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? One simple answer, the opening call newsletter. Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school, taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Opening call subscribers also receive access to dozens of educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors the reality is that navigating financial markets can be risky markets can be chaotic and difficult to understand having the latest market advice can help you turn this chaos into a key for creating winning trades at TFNN we understand that it can be hard to find reliable market news that's why each of our market experts offers their very own market newsletter, a must-have tool for every trader out there striving to find an edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets so you can analyze the market before you trade. Try any of our great newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Just visit the Newsletters tab on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. And you have Stellantis out there yesterday, this news, but it maybe just lost in the shuffle a bit. Uh, yeah, they're laying off 1,100 workers at their Jeep plant in Ohio. And yeah, Jeep's got some problems, man. So that is where they produce the Jeep Gladiator pickup truck. There it is. Guess it's not selling to the degree that they thought it was selling, man. Jeep's got some problems. They get some beautiful cars. Those Jeep Grand Cherokees, absolutely beautiful. $110,000. How about that? Right. Uh, and that's just one of them. But it's always jumped out at me that they went super high end on some of the high end. And I don't know if Jeep has the the means to pull one hundred and ten thousand. But this isn't what they're talking about. They got problems across the board. And nonetheless, the market, they trade lower on that yesterday. And you're higher today at fourteen twenty two up by two point five percent for Stellantis. And we'll just finish it up with the conversation of Powell, man. So he's out there at two o'clock, you know. Look at where we could be, folks. And this is keep your eye on it, no matter what. That's what I say. You think the policies are good in the long run? You may be right. But in the short run, man, this is the potential debt to share of GDP. Okay? These tax cuts, they're going to matter. And they don't pay for themselves, folks. Okay? They never pay for themselves. The trickle-down deal that somehow you cut taxes for the wealthiest 
and the corporate, and somehow there's enough growth in the economy that the taxes pay for themselves does not happen. I would love to see if they do. Show me they do. Please educate me if they do. All I've seen is they don't happen. And you're talking about whether it's the baseline or you got the full Trump plan talking about those tax cuts, et cetera. Yeah, you're talking about 150 percent of share of GDP by 2034 versus maybe 122 percent. Both staggering numbers. OK, but keep your eye on that because that contributes to yields and yields contribute to everything. And the bond market is much larger than the equity market across the board, man. But we got a recoil today. So we'll see where we go from there. As you get the 10 year pulling back a bit, we got a little bit of the dollar weakness. We have gold trading higher and you have markets through the moon yet again. Look at that. 21,082 NASDAQ 100 up by almost a full percent right now. You got the S&Ps up by about five tenths percent. Folks, we got a man, Basil Chapman, coming up. He's in the den getting ready. Go sign up for his webinar one week from today by signing up for the opening call. You get that webinar for free. And don't forget about live trading with Larry tomorrow. Have a great one, folks. We'll see you tomorrow.